All right, it is time. I'm sure um, more people will be joining soon, but I always like to start right on time. Um, hello, my name is Kara Moncrief and I'm the Clinical Communications Director for Sinclair in North America. And today uh, is my actual favorite lecture to do. Uh, I developed this PowerPoint uh, lecture topic, oh gosh, maybe four or five months ago. And then I realized I have done this talk actually in multiple countries and I've never done an, an actual webinar on it. So I'm very, very excited to share um, today's recorded version. All right, so let me share my screen. And then I'll start here from the beginning. Okay, good. Now let me adjust my screen here so I can see. All right, here we go. <laughs> um, so what we're going to be focusing on are enhanced clinical outcomes with a multi-technology approach, which is really the, the wave of the future, right? It's, it's no longer just one treatment, a, a standalone. It's being able to use all of your tools in your toolbox. It's being able to, especially when you own a platform system with multiple technologies on it, it's being able to layer these treatments for optimal results um, sorry, I was just, uh, helping someone join. Um, it's being able to show your patients these optimal results quickly, um, and also very efficaciously, right? Uh, instead of having to do a series of eight treatments on the face, let's say, now we're down to three or four treatments uh, once a month and being able to see the results really after one, it being very dramatic. So that really is the wave of the future in, in our industry. And understanding, because it may seem like a lot, wow, we're, we're stacking this, this many treatments on, on top of one another, it's a lot of heat, but we're gonna break down and understand why. Why is it the cells that we're targeting, the layers of the skin, why it's safe um, and why it's so efficacious and why we see great, such great results. Okay, so we'll start. First, I just wanna do a little review of overall aging so we can really understand what's going on because it's never just our skin, right? It, unfortunately, there's a lot more that's happening with the face and I'm 42. So if any of you are around my age or older, you already know, right? You've already seen it in your own face that we don't have as much fat in our face as we did when we were in our you know, 20s or teens. Um, there's a lot of other changes than just lack skin or, or lines. Why is that? It's because everything changes in our body. So first skin, skin thickness decreases 6% every 10 years, which is, is quite a lot because our skin in general is not very thick. I mean, it's thick, but um, when you really think of that percentage every 10 years, it, it, is, um, it is pretty dramatic. From 20 years old, collagen production declines about 1 to 1.5 1 um, 1 to 1 uh, every year. And when we hit about 40, really our collagen production almost comes to a stop. So it's really important. One, I always talk about preventative, right? Starting young, keeping as much collagen as we can, but it's dire when we hit about my age. When we hit about 40, that's when we really need to stay on it and stimulate a lot. Muscle. Um, past the age of 40, we lose approximately 1% of muscle mass per year. Bone. Bone is not a huge contributing factor to aging, but there is still some. Um, it's just not the biggest. But over the age of 35, the number of bone regenerating cells decrease in our face, leading to hollower eyes, flattening of cheeks, jaw degrades. So, you know, our jaws, jawline's not as strong as it used to be. Our cheeks start to flatten um, a bit more. That's also due to fat loss, um, but some of it is bone, even though it's minimal. And then fat, we lose, this is a big one, with fat, we lose about 10% of our facial fat at 35 years. 
think of that. We lose about 10% of our fa facial fat at 35 years. And then the big one is we lose an additional five to 10% every five to 10 years. So it really starts to decline after 35. And that's usually when we really start to notice the change, right? Like, okay, um, she looks much more mature now, or I look much more mature now. And that is due a lot with because of the fat loss that we have. At 55 years, you may have lost 40% of your facial fat. <laughs> Why can't it be that on the body? Why does it have to be on the face? But unfortunately it is, it's a thing. Um, but being able to, although we're probably not doing fat transfers in the face, right? Unless you're a plastic surgeon, um, there are a lot of things that we can do to help the appearance um, just by targeting the, the skin or fat issues that we have, let's say like when we have fat accumulation in the lower face. Now that leads me to my next slide and that is the inverted V, right? So when we're young, we have that perfect V shape, not, not everyone. Some people just have natural, like more of a square face. Um, but for the most part, we do have that natural V. We are, um, we are really don't have any issues. Sorry, I can't talk. <laughs> we really don't have any issues um, in the upper area of the face, for example, you know, drooping lids or, or um, lines and wrinkles on the forehead, but we are really tight here in the lower face. And then as we age, of course, that more so inverts. We start to get much more hollow here in the temple region. And then we start to, not everyone, but we start to accumulate the fat and we start to have jowling. Now, we always have facial fat, but we, we, we just learned, we lose it. But then we start because we have different pockets of fat in the face. For example, here, this is called the nasolabial fat pad. So in this region, sometimes people really start to become prominent here, not only um, because they may start accumulating a bit more fat in the lower face, but also those fat pads can start to slide down. So then we start to have this, this push and we have these deep nasal labial folds, then fat and loose skin start to kind of slide down in this region and we start to have jowling. Therefore, our jawline is no longer um, really defined. And it's funny, Last time I did this lecture, I told the story of when I started with the company, I was only about 30. So, you know, relatively young. And when I would go to events like an open house at an office and I would give the option to the client, you know, what would you like to have done? What would you like to see? And they would ask me and I'd always look at them. And if they were my age or older, for me, I would always see maybe their eyes, right? So I would see lines in here, maybe creepiness here, maybe heavy hooded lids. And I would say, I can do an eyebrow lift on you. And usually the, the woman, usually it's female, would say, actually, is there anything you can do for my lower face? And I remember thinking like, why? Like, why does that bother her? Um, now I know. <laughs> it's, it's the one thing that bothers me. I, I'm not perfect anymore around my eyes, right? But that doesn't bother me at all. What bothers me is that I'm starting to get heavier here. I'm starting to get heavier here. I'm starting to get heavier here. And you really, really, if you start to really listen to women, that is typically the number one thing that, that bothers women with aging. It's that lower face issue. Now I get it because I'm at that age now. Um, so really listening to your patients is important, right? Making sure that they're happy and you're doing exactly what they want. Because if I would have done her eyes, maybe she wouldn't have purchased because that really wasn't what she was concerned with. Okay. I did a webinar on this topic uh, a couple months ago. If you guys want to go back and watch it, it you can always find them on our Sinclair College um, site, or we always upload them to YouTube. Sinker, Sagar, Wrinkler. This was one of my favorite uh, topics that I did because these are the three types of aging. I'm not going to fully go through them like I did on that webinar, but I want to bring it up because not every face ages the same. Although the statistics are about the same, not everyone's going to look the exact same. So for example, Lisa Bonet here, 
if you look back at her photos when she was young, she had a very round face, lots of facial fat. And for her, she doesn't necessarily get like deep lines and she definitely doesn't have a lot of fat accumulation on her lower face or even jowling, but it's a sunken look, right? We can see that she has a sunken or hollow appearance around her temples, especially in the lower face. So you would want to treat this patient differently than you would treat, let's say, Drew Barrymore, who's a sagger. Saggers, and that's me, um, a lot of times have oily skin. So their skin stays thick throughout their life. And a lot of times they they suffer from acne at a younger age, me again. Um, but our skin stays thicker because it's oily. Uh, however, <laughs> We still age. So gravity and everything that goes on, we start to jowl and get very heavy on the lower face. So I would treat her and do a combination treatment on her very differently than I would with Lisa Bonet. And then lastly is the wrinkler. Self-explanatory, right? We don't really see jowling on Maria Schreiber. Um, not, I mean, there is definitely some hollowing because of age, but her and her mom, if you look back at pictures of her mom, um, Eunice Kennedy, they are heavy, heavy wrinklers. It almost looks like they've smoked their whole lives, right? It's just their genetics. It's just, it is what it is. So again, it would be a very different combination approach to Maria Shriver than to Drew Barrymore than to Lisa Bonet. So just understanding this, um, I think is really important when, when you're going in to offer and to set up somebody's um, combination protocol that, that you're gonna be on an adventure with, right? And making sure that they're really happy. And then of course, you can always have a patient that is a combination. You can absolutely have someone that's a sagger um, and a wrinkler, for example. So definitely it's not, you're just a sinker, you're just a sire, you're just a wrinkler. There can be an absolute mix, but really knowing what to look for. And I go into that in much more detail in that sinker, sagger, wrinkler uh, webinar that I had done. Okay. So technologies that are used in conjunction. Um, I didn't include outside of Sinclair's technologies. Uh, for example, like if you wanted to add in microneedling or PRP or threads, absolutely. If these are the things that you offer injectables to put more volume in, like Lisa Bonet, she's a perfect example of somebody that needs injectables. Even when you're thickening her skin with these types of technologies, it's not going to hurt to then at the end, put in some volume where she's lost it. Of course, it's going to make her look younger. Um, but I just didn't include all of that with this one, but also just remember, think outside the box. And I'll try to remember too, to add in like, when would you put microneedling into that mix? When would you put threads into that mix? Injectables, so on and so forth. If I forget, you can always ask me at the end. Okay, so the technologies that I'm going to be really focused on, um, not so much our, our vaginal um, handpiece. I did at the very end of the, of the PowerPoint I put in a women's health slide. So for example, that you can do a combination um, for labia plus vaginal. So there's a lot of combinations you can do when it comes to that, but I'm really focused on the face today. Uh, and, and also the, the face combination treatments that I'm gonna talk about can also um, be used on the body. For example, if someone has like, really bad stretch marks and loose skin, that would be a, almost the same combination approach that you would use for the face. I'll talk about that though in just a bit. So first technology, we have multipolar RF and vacuum, which is our V form. So this one is using vacuum and heat to either go deep into the fat and to shrink fat cells, or you can keep it a little bit more superficial to tighten skin. Then the next one over is our bipolar RF with cooling. This is our VST handpiece. Um, this one is just heat-based, so it's really great just to be able to target your deep dermis or um, mid dermis for collagen stimulation. Um, next one over is our ablative or non-ablative um, RF technology with, and it's fractionated, so we're only treating frac fractions of the skin at a time. So this one's able to stay very superficial for ablation, meaning 
a controlled removal, kind of burning the skin, but in a controlled way and removal of, um, of the skin layers in the epidermis or it can go deep in our, in our deeper dermis for collagen and lifting. Then we have our vaginal, uh, which is the VVR. So that's for uh, vaginal uh, tightening. It's for uh, postmenopausal dryness. It's for stress urinary incontinence. It treats a lot and it does it very effectively. Um, next one over is our IPL. IPL does a lot, but today what I'm focused on is the fact that it can treat vascular and pigmentation uh, on the face, but it also does like hair removal, acne. Oh, I'm going to talk about acne clearance too. So acne clearance, I'm going to talk about skin rejuvenation. So it does acne clearance, skin rejuvenation, pigment, vascular, and hair removal. The only one I'm not going to be focused on today is the hair removal. And then um, I didn't add in our long pulsed Indiag laser. That one's great for like body leg veins and dark skin hair removal. It additionally does skin rejuvenation. So whenever I'm talking about the IPL doing skin rejuvenation, the Indiag can do it as well. And if you have a darker skin um, client, the Indiag is the one you would want to go to for skin rejuvenation. So if we're talking about a combo with a skin type five or six, uh, Indiag would be your go-to for skin rejuvenation. Um, I can, IPL can be used on your lighter skin types, um, also darker skin types, but if you have both, then may as well just use the laser on your darker skin types because it's just really, really safe, extra safe. Okay, so now we'll talk about the staples. When I, when I call these the staples, it's because they are, it's like that, that, those two things that you really should have in your practice. It is what preps the skin and prepping the skin really is everything. Um, but it's also what boosts your results. So what I mean by that. So our pristine is um, our diamond tip microdermabrasion. So it's vacuum and then different coarseness and size of tips. They're diamonds on the tips and they're just rough cut diamonds to exfoliate. So with the exfoliation process, you're removing the dead skin cells so you get a better absorption of everything else that you're going to do to the skin. Plus that exfoliation just immediately makes the skin look beautiful. So no matter what, um, your the skin looks great. You may beat it up after with like all this heat, um, but it really truly is an amazing standalone treatment too, because it just makes the skin glow. But moreover, so I'll talk about the dead skin cells first, actually. So when we have a lot of, we have 15 to 30 dead skin layers. And it's for a reason because our skin is protecting us from the outside environment, right? So pathogens, infections, all the things, free radicals. But when we have a lot of buildup of dead skin, that makes us look dull, it makes us look aged. Plus we have a lot more buildup of dead skin as we get older because our cell turnover is not as fast. So the older we get, the more exfoliation really we should have because it's not as quick as it used to be. So we just start to look dull and dry and all the, the things. So removing those dead skin cells are important for that reason, but also when you're using light-based technologies, light will naturally scatter from the skin. We can't help that. It's just, it is what it is. It will always scatter. But when you have a lot of dead skin cells, it scatters a lot. So then you don't get majority of the light, majority of the heat actually going into the tissue. So that's important. Um, also with radio frequency, you just get a better depth of penetration when you remove some of those layers. Now, we're not removing all of them, but you know, the ones that are really built up. Now, moreover, it's the vacuum component. The vacuum is pretty strong on the pristine, our microdermabrasion, and it gets the blood flow going. So you get microcirculation to the tissue. And when you bring blood to the skin, that means we're bringing nutrients and oxygen to the tissue. So really what you're doing is you're making the skin healthy to then receive all of the other things that you're going to be doing. So that's why it's a staple. If you're doing it just as a skin prep, it takes five minutes. It's just a couple quick passes on the face and then you're done and you move on and you just have a good start, a good base to anything else you're doing. Now the Dermafuse is a staple because it is a booster. It it really has been proven that when we boost our, our results at the end with the Dermafuse, we get to that end goal much faster. So I won't fully go through 
what the technology does, um, but it creates openings in the skin channels and we use different serums like collagen booster that has all of the ingredients to not only tell fibroblast cells to produce collagen but we're also using ingredients to make sure that it's producing healthy collagen um, younger collagen right like the collagen that our skin used to make when we were in our 20s so it's just going to be healthier therefore results are going to be better and faster um, we have a uh, serum that's intensive hydration so that can be used before your rf and light based treatments because you're hydrating the skin before you're going in with all of the technologies that look for water in the skin. Therefore, your results are going to be better. Um, and then I have some other combinations in here, including the Dermafuse, where like you boost your acne results with our smooth serum that, that fights acne. Uh, so it does a lot. These are definitely staples in the, within the practice. If you don't have them, I highly recommend putting that kind of on your list for something that you'll work towards, you know, in the future um, when it's right for you. Um, but it really is, I can't stress enough, like the results are that much better with both of them. Okay, so now we'll go into the, the skin aging symptoms that we see. It would be nice if we just had fine lines and wrinkles, right? Like that's our only issue. We just do some Botox and everything's good. <laughs> our neurotoxin, maybe it's not Botox, but neurotoxin in general, and then everything's fine. But unfortunately that's not the case, right? We end up getting thinning of the um, skin, all of it, epidermis and dermis. We get loss of elasticity. Um, because of just the overall the fibers and um, uh, the collagen production slows down, they're not as strong. Um, it's just that old collagen that's really not doing any doing us any good, which is why we need to replace it with new. We get sagging of face tissue, we get wrinkles, we get skin roughness, and that's usually always the case. If somebody has fine lines and wrinkles, when you look closely, they usually always have. Um, epidermal issues as well, meaning like roughness and, um, and uh, what's another word I'm looking for? Um, 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 I can't think, but yes, roughness to the skin. Uh, changes is in skin texture, textural issues. That's the word I was looking for. It was my next bullet point. So textural problems, um, vascular lesions, right? When, when we get sun damage or there's a lot that can create broken capillaries on the face the main culprit is the sun. So a lot of times we think like, okay, well, we get solar lentigo, we get sunspots, right? That's from the sun, but it's not just solar lentigo. Usually when you look at someone and they say, oh, I, I'm starting to see sunspots, I wanna get rid of them. When you look closely, it's usually broken capillaries and sunspots, not always, but many times. Um, so skin color, abnormalities, age spots, and then enlarged pores. So there's a lot that happens with the skin. Now, this is why it's so important to understand there's a lot going on. Therefore, a lot of cells are, are to blame <laughs> and a lot of the layers of the skin are to blame. So that's why the combination approach is so important. Okay. So now we'll go into, um, Hold on, give me one second here. Sorry. Um, now we'll go into maybe just a typical patient that, that comes into to your practice. Um, a, a woman, maybe in her 60s or 70s, who has never done anything to her face and is you know really starting to weigh on her now. It's starting to bother her. And a lot of times I hear from these women, it's too late for me. <laughs> I know it's too late for me, but I'm still here because it bothers me. It's not, right? Because we know we have a lot of tools in our toolbox, especially when you have a platform system, you have a lot of technologies. Now stacking these, this is when it's not too late for her and you can make a huge difference in someone like this. But let's, let's look and see what we see. What are we looking for? What's bothering her? Maybe she just doesn't even know. She just says, I'm aged. I don't even know what bothers me, but there's aging going on. Okay, so what are we seeing? We're seeing laxity and hooded lids. We're seeing fine lines and wrinkles. We're seeing solar lentigo. We're seeing textural issues. We see jowling and we see dull and dry skin. So when, when you're thinking about treating someone with a combination approach, if they come in and they tell you, well, just 
just these lines above my lips bother me. You can treat them and you can make them look great, but usually the patient will start to look at other things and say, now I want this done, which is great. Okay, you probably will have that patient for life. Or it's like that such a small area that you just treated, is it really gonna show a wow, right? So that's why I always like to talk about treating it as a whole, if you can, if they can afford it, if they're okay with it, treating the full face, because that's what's going to take the 10 years off of their face, not just treating the lines above their lip. Now, I get it. Not everyone wants to treat their full face. Maybe just one area bothers me. That's okay, too. And you can do a combination approach on that small area. But if you can treat it as a whole, that is when you have a really happy patient and it's very synergistic. Okay, so now that we saw all of the things that this this woman had, where are all of those problems originating? All right, so now here's the skin. We have the epidermis, we have the dermis, and then we have the sub-Q, which is our fat layer. So I'm gonna move me, because I'm in the way. Okay, so dull skin, that's going to be on the, the surface when we have like textural problems and dull skin, that's gonna be found in the epidermis. When we have solar lentigo, that is also going to be found in the epidermis. Why? Because where our melanocytes are located, the melanocytes are the cells that produce pigment. Where are they? They're at the bottom of the epidermis for a reason, because they protect us from the sun. So they're there, so the sun doesn't really, it's not supposed to, but it still does, doesn't penetrate all the way through our dermis and mess up our scaffolding, right? Because our, our deeper dermis is really where most of our aging is coming from. Um, so those melanocytes are supposed to protect us from the sun because 90 or 95% of aging comes from the sun, which is crazy. But solar lentigo is usually superficial. Sometimes certain types of pigmental, pigmented issues do travel into the dermis a bit, but majority of the time it is the epidermis. Okay, so now we're looking into the dermis. So when we saw that she had laxity and hooded lids, where is that originating? in the dermis. Why? Because that's where our fibroblast cells are. That's where our elastin is. That's what's giving us not only the thickness of our skin, but also that resiliency to bounce back. Then fine lines and wrinkles, same thing. When we have good, thick, healthy collagen and good, strong elastin, we have less and less fine lines and wrinkles, just like we have less and less um, laxity to our tissue. Dry skin. Dry skin is also found in the dermis. Um, glycosaminoglycans. Those are just as important to our skin as collagen is. Glycosaminoglycans is what makes up most of the dermis. It's kind of that fluid that's swimming around inside and in, in between all of the collagen and elastin fibers. Um, all of the connective tissue. And what those do is it gives our skin turgidity, that, that um, look of, of fullness and youth, really. So turgidity is when you don't water a house plant, what happens to it? Well, it starts to slump over and eventually it's going to die, right? But it's that slumping. And when you add water to it, if it bounces back, that means now it has turgidity. So same thing with skin, that's what glycosaminoglycans do. So the more hydrated your tissue is, the younger you're going to just naturally look. And it's important, but it's located in the dermis. And then where are our jowls? So we looked at her and, and we could see that she was starting to jowl. Not bad, but it was starting to happen. So there's two problems there. It's not just loose skin, right? It's also the fat issues that we have in the lower face. So we do need to not only tighten the skin, but also decrease that fat in the area. Because if I just tried to tighten her skin, is she really going to be happy with jowls? No, because again, our fat pads start to slip. They start to fall down. They start to make us very heavy on our lower face. So we need to be able to address the subcutaneous as well. Okay. So now what is our approach? So I broke it down into the, those layers of skin. First the epidermis, then we'll go into the dermis, then we'll talk about the, um, 
the fat layer. So in the epidermis, what is our approach? Well, first and foremost, we need to prep the skin, right? Remember, that's a staple. Prepping the skin is so important. So remove the dead keratinocytes. Keratinocytes are the cells, the ones that turn over. We always hear this. Our skin cells turn over every 28 to 30 days. We, we've heard this so many years. What are those cells? They're the keratinocytes. Those are our cells that are found in the epidermis. So again, we have 15 to 30 dead skin layers. Let's remove some of those. Let's get blood flow going. Let's prep the skin for everything else. So removing the dead skin cells. Now we can go in and target the solar lentigo with our IPL because the IPL is highly, highly attracted to pigment, right? A, uh, IPL needs a chromophore. A chromophore is a light sensitive molecule. And one of those is uh, melanin. So the problem is when we start to damage these cells with sun, our melanocytes start to go crazy and produce too much pigment. And then those pigmented granules start to move up from at the bottom of the epidermis and start to move upward. So we start to visually see them. With the IPL, we can go in there and shatter them into tiny particles. And then our body then gets rid of all of that pigment for us once we've broken it up with all of the light and heat. So that's our way of getting rid of pigment. Then um, what are we gonna do for uh, overall like texture problems? Well, the VFR has two, two abilities. One, it can go deeper in the dermis, which is going to be our next slide, but I don't have the VFR on there, but just remember that VFR can go deep in the dermis for building collagen and elastin. And where it really, really shines, I mean, it shines doing that as well, but what it also does is it has the ability to do ablation. And ablation, again, is that controlled way with heat to remove some of the surface of that skin. That's the textural issues I was talking about. Almost anybody that has fine lines and wrinkles, when you look closely, they also have textural problems, almost always. So it, it really does need to be addressed sooner or later, but at some point. So we're able to remove some of the surface of the skin in that way with the VFR. Okay, so that targets keratinocytes, but it also helps melanocytes as well. So it can remove pigment as well as texture which are keratinocytes, but it's just dead ones, right? Okay, so now let's think about our, our dermis approach. And by the way, after we go through these layers of skin at the end, which is actually pretty soon, um, I give examples of what would a combination be with Sinclair technology. Okay, so now our dermis approach. So what's going on here? What do we need to fix? One, it's fibroblast cells, right? And remember, when we hit about 40, drops off. So we have to get in there. It's not, they're not gonna just naturally stimulate on their own because we're no longer at that age where fibroblast cells really want to do that unless you cut yourself and then they get activated, right? Because fibroblast cells are, their job is to heal, to heal us. So now with controlled heat, we can go in there and we can stimulate those little guys. And when you stimulate it in a certain area, then fibroblast cell activity really heightens. And what they do is they go over to the area and they start to secrete collagen fibers. But additionally, they start to break down old collagen. It's like uh, remodeling a house. Take out the old, replace it with the new. Oh, everything's beautiful now. But we need to do that, right? Because at, at some point, our body's not gonna do it for us naturally. So then we look at her jowling. So we're stimulating fibroblast cells for her overall thickness of her skin and also tightening of the skin, also fine lines and wrinkles. The VFR can help with that too. But now let's talk about jowls. We need something to target that. So with the V-form, we're targeting ad, um, adipocytes. Yep, it's, a, it's there. Adipocytes, so fat cells, right? Again, why do we have jowls? Loose skin, it is laxity, but it's fat issues. So with the V-form, we have a protocol. If you're already a customer, you already know it, refit, where we can shrink the fat and tighten the skin on the lower face at the same time. So they're really happy really quickly because we're targeting both of the causes of, of jowling. Okay, so now we, we spoke about the fat, 
And then the, the boost, right? That's the dermafuse at the very end. And you're gonna see some examples of combination protocols in just a bit, but boosting all of that. Okay, so we've prepped the skin with the pristine, we've removed the dead skin cells, we've got the blood circulation going, great. Now we can go in with radio frequency, we can do like ST around the eyes, we can do V form on the lower face, we can do VFR um, on the full face. Uh, we can throw in an IPL to, to target pigment, to, to break up that pigment. If we're not doing the VFR in ablation, there's a lot of different ways you can do combination. And then we've targeted all the layers and all the cells and all the issues. Now we're going in to boost that. So with the Dermafuse, if they have really bad issues with the lower face and, and a lot of fat accumulation, we can use the lipo -LM that further helps lipolysis. Lipolysis is what we're doing with the V-form. We're shrinking fat cells and we're taking the fluid out of the fat cell and then we're driving it through the circulatory system so the body naturally burns it. Well, we can enhance that with certain ingredients that want to help stimulate lipolysis. So they're just working together. Um, we can do the collagen booster. Again, what is the collagen booster? It's using ingredients such as iron, vitamin C. They're ingredients that we literally would not be able to produce collagen without. So for example, if someone had scurvy, scurvy is when someone has zero vitamin C, a complete deficiency of vitamin C they stop producing collagen. So then there's a lot of issues, bleeding and teeth loss and all kinds of things going on. Their body really can't produce collagen. So we are using ingredients like vitamin C that not only tells fibroblast cells like, hey, here I am, produce, but also not only produce, and, and iron as well is, is just as important, not only produce, but produce healthier collagen. Okay, so we get there quicker, but we also see the results are that much more efficacious. And then intensive hydration, I spoke about, we can use it before all of these treatments because we're putting a glyc, because a glycosaminoglycan, one of them that you'll recognize because there's many of them, but the most recognizable one is HA, hyaluronic acid. So hyaluronic acid, is it's like a source of water, right? And when we hydrate the, the tissue, that means that the radio frequency is going to be really attracted to the HA in the skin or the IPL or in DIAG, whatever you're using for skin rejuvenation um, is gonna be really attracted to all of that water in the skin. So you can use it before or you can use it after or you can use it before and after. Okay, so. I hope all of that makes sense, you know, breaking it down. What are we seeing? What's going on in the skin? Why is a combination approach so important? But now let's look at like reality. Okay, so what would we really do for this woman that came in? This is just a, an example. And I'll throw in if you use microneedling, if you use threads, if you use filler, what would you do? So first prep the skin with the pristine microdermabrasion. Then you can use ST, around the lips, around the eyes, those small areas that are kind of hard to get into. For example, treating the eyelids for, for her heavy hooded lid in this area, under the eye, you know, those fine lines and wrinkles she has around the mouth. Maybe she wants a natural lip plump. Then you would go in with V-form in the lower face and submental if they needed it, shrink the fat and tighten the skin all in this area. Then you can go in with the IPL and you can do two things with the IPL. You can target the pigment and shatter that, that solar lentigo that adds a lot of age to our face. And you can use it for skin rejuvenation too, on top of all these other things. So the, when you're using the IPL, the SR filter, the skin rejuvenation filter, it's targeting water in the skin. So what it's doing is it's just building up uh, a generalized heat in the dermis to stimulate more collagen and just help the skin like the ST would do. Um, but you can, you can stack those because they're different types of technologies. So you can use the IPL, warm the tissue and the ST to get very targeted um, where fine lines and wrinkles may be. Um, then you can use the VFR to do ablation, so resurfacing. 
and then you can infuse it with the collagen booster. I know that sounds like a lot. Um, it, it, it's not going to be for every patient, right? This, this many, and you don't always have to do this many. Um, but this is just an example of what you can do that is very, very safe and very, very efficacious. Uh, last time I did this lecture, I um, was asked the question about how much would it be and about the time. So I don't remember. Let me calculate it really quick. So pristine is about five minutes to prep. Um, ST around the eyes and, and the lip will be about 30 minutes. V form is about 20 minutes. So let's just say we're at about an hour. IPL, once you have their parameters, is 10 minutes. And then the VFR. So I would say all of this, if you're doing the whole shebang, would be about two hours, give or take, and, and adding in some before and after photos, right? Um, but then they're only needing to come in once a month. And then they're usually done after three or four treatments because you are doing a lot to the skin at once. But it is safe. Now, I do want to say if you do have a darker skin type, of course, you're going to be very careful. You're going to be much more gentle. You may not stack as many things in the first treatment. You're still testing for safety. Um, this is more so for this female here. She's probably a skin type two. You can do a lot to her skin. She's, she's going to heal great. She doesn't have any contraindications, of course. Um, but you're going to be safer on your darker skin. Um, of course, and just, just be a bit more gentle. Now the price. So the pricing came down to around, let me see, two, four, five, six, eight, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. It was around like 1500 to 2000 per sitting. And of course, if that sounds low to you, you can increase for sure. But I would say 1500 would, would be more so the lower end if you're doing all of these. Of course, you can lower it to a thousand if you're only stacking like three treatments or, you know, just not as many. Okay. So I hope that helps. Here's just an example of what that kind of would look like after, after a session. So for her, we're looking at her pigment is almost completely gone. Um, her texture is a whole lot better. I mean, her skin is just glowing and it's smooth. Um, fine lines and wrinkles around the mouth are gone. Um, jowling has highly decreased. Her nasal labial folds are not as heavy. So this is kind of what to expect when you're stacking like that. Because again, we're targeting all of the issues, not just one or two, everything. We're treating her as a whole. Okay, so a combination approach isn't just for this specific patient or um, it's not just for aging, right? So we can look at it in many forms. For example, ac um, acne, active or scarring. So for active acne, you can get it under control really quickly by doing a combination. And I'm gonna explain what, what these are and why. So pristine, yes, again, to prep the skin. If they're highly, highly, highly active in certain areas, then just skip over that because it's a vacuum and rough cut diamonds. We just don't want to open active acne lesions. Um, so you would just go around in the areas that you're safe to do so. But why it's so important is those dead skin cells, that's what's creating the problem. So if you can remove as many dead skin cells as you can, you're not, they're not going to have as much of an active acne breakout that their skin would want to do in a week and two weeks, so on and so forth. Because Dead skin cells create a, um, a barrier over the pore, and then it's a, a breeding ground for bacteria when, when we're really oily and our, and our um, sebaceous glands are kind of crazy, then we have dead skin cells and debris that's clogging those pores, and then it just breeds, right? So when we remove those dead skin cells, now we have a perfect, um, again, like prep to the skin to be able to not only get better results, but also to um, start fighting what the root cause is anyways. But that's not the only root cause, it's also sebum. So after you've prepped the skin, then we can go in with the 415 filter with the IPL, in specific it's blue light. And that blue light attacks the acne bacteria from within. So we go in and we destroy and kill all of that acne bacteria. Then right after that, when you use the 415 filter, you never really hold heat after because it's more of a, 
uh, chemical response, the blue light and the chromophore, which is called porphyrin inside the acne, it's more of a chemical reaction than it is a heat reaction. So the skin is pretty cool after you're done with, with the acne. Therefore, you're safe to go in again with the IPL and use the 580 filter. Why? Why would we want to do that? Two reasons. One, it's going to get a jump start on scarring anyways, because the 580 goes deep, it heats the water in the skin, um, it helps with collagen um, remodeling. So you're just going to get a jump start on that. But moreover, the 580 also regulates sebum. So it helps to slow down the sebaceous glands and they're not so, so crazy. And then they're not nearly as oily. Um, therefore their pores are a lot smaller too. So that's what I was talking about the root cause. It's dead skin, but it's also the sebaceous glands going crazy and the 580 regulates them. Then we would go in with the, uh, and we would infuse with the Dermafuse, the smooth serum. And the smooth serum um, also just helps fight uh, any like leftover acne bacteria in the area. So we can get really nice results when we do this combination approach. And then they don't have to come in as often either. Okay, so then an idea of um, scarring, acne scars or scars in general, let's say you have like stretch marks on the body or scar on the body. You can do a um, you can do a combination approach really on any type of scar on the body. So first, pristine microdermabrasion, right? Prep the skin. Um, then you can go in with the 580 filter, do some skin rejuvenation, warm that tissue, get those fibroblast cells um, excited. Then you can go in with the VFR and do ablation and deep coagulation. So you're getting in deeper to stimulate more collagen, plus you're resurfacing the skin because any type of scarring, it's both superficial, we can see it, and we can see that there's a lot of textural changes with scarring, but it's also very deep. So we need to be able to treat the depth of the scar plus the superficial of the scar, because we're not only targeting the textural problem that we're seeing, but it's also the sizing of the scar, which is deeper where we can't see. So you'd go in and do both ablation and coagulation, and then you would infuse it with collagen booster, right? We've just stimulated so many fibroblast cells. And some people, they don't realize you can use the Dermafuse over the VFR. Absolutely. Um, so you just boost it right after. And then if, if you do microneedling, you can always throw microneedling in um, as well. The only thing with microneedling is that you would always want it to be your last step to anything else that you're doing because you can't put heat over a mechanical injury. So I can't put needles in and then put heat on top of that. That will create um, complications like PIH, but you can do it the other way around. You can heat the tissue and then microneedle the tissue. Okay, so that's just a couple more examples and then um, just some before and after photos of kind of what to expect, right? We're getting the active acne um, under control quickly. Um, you can also see the skin just looks really good too because of the microdermabrasion and all the great things that we're doing to the skin, like the skin rejuvenation uh, filter and the um, boosting of serums. Uh, and then an example of acne scarring here, which is great because he didn't like his acne scarring, but he got more than that, right? He also looks a lot younger because it targeted the pore size, it targeted the texture, it targeted the fine lines and wrinkles. Um, but that's just an example of like what to expect if you were doing a combination. This is my last slide. I put this in here just to talk about women's health in general because there's a lot of combinations that you can do with women's health. Um, I actually could probably have a slide on almost anything out there that someone would come in for, there's a combination for it usually. Um, but I wanted to focus on, on the women's health because there's just so much. So for example, if someone had melasma and we have these, if you're already a customer, we already have all of these created for you. They can be found on the customer portal. Um, but these are all just steps in using combination approaches for anything that a woman may face um, after having a baby. So for example, melasma and the step process that you would use to treat that and its combination approach, hormonal acne we just spoke about, um, 
contouring and contouring with stretch marks. So if they have excess fat that they can't get rid of after having the baby, plus they have stretch marks, plus they have loose skin, there's a combo approach that you can do to target not only the fat, not only the laxity, but also the stretch marks. So they're really happy really quickly. Um, and then of course, with, with women's health, we can talk about labia and um, vaginal too, to where you can sell packages of um, labia be a tightening uh, and vaginal tightening, or um, we the VFR treats the color and the texture of the labia as well as tightens. So you can put packages together of like the color change of the labia, laxity, texture, plus vaginal laxity, or plus vaginal dryness, or plus stress urinary incontinence. There's a lot you can do in making combination packages for patients. Um, really, it's there's no limit to it, which is exciting. And now going back to thinking of like, is your patient a sinker, sagger, or wrinkler? Well, if they're a sinker, you want to help thicken the skin, right? Because their skin looks very thin when they're very hollow. So you want to thicken the skin, but then after you've done these combination approaches to thicken the skin, they're going to need more volume, right? And then that's when you can add in a bit of volume after you're done with all of your energy-based device um, treatments. So just remember, always remember, what does your patient look like in front of you? What type of ager are you or are they? Um, so you can go at it at, at a really, really good approach. All right. And that that's all. I, I love this slide just because if you want... Um, to get in touch with us, here's all the information. You can scan the QR code and that takes you directly to our website. You can contact us with questions in the future. Always, we're always here. Um, Sinclair.com forward slash US or info.na stands for North America. Info.na at Sinclair.com. There's our Instagram handles, Sinclair North America, or you can always call us 888-415-1192. Um, but yeah, we're always here for questions that you may have. If you're new at, at um, doing a combination approach, then um, I know it can sometimes be a little bit nerve wracking in the beginning. We have an account actually here where I live in Las Vegas and she had a couple patients that had, and you may have seen her before and after photos on Instagram, but she had a couple patients that had severe acne and severe acne scarring both. Um, and she was so, she heard me lecture on this at our beauty boss last year. And she came up to me after and she's like, listen, I have these couple patients that are going to be very difficult, but I want to do so much for them. And I said, sure, email us at the clinical department. I'll write down the combination approach I would use. I'll find out all the other things that you have to offer in your practice, like microneedling or whatever, whatever else she offered. Um, and we'll put it together. <laughs> and her before and after photos are so phenomenal. And she was, she was so happy, but I get it. Like in the beginning, when you hear about all these heat-based treatments, heat-based treatments are already kind of nerve wracking in the beginning. You don't want to burn someone. Of course, you want to do everything the right way. But once you know how to do that and you know how to stack all these treatments, the results are really incredible. Um, but if you feel a little bit nervous in the beginning, you can always reach out to us. We're always here. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna open the chat right now because I see that I have two. Um, so we'll start from there. Um, can you discuss the pre May for pre treatment prep also? Sure. So um, well, the thing is. Okay, so with the pre May, if you also have like the Dermafuse and the Pristine, you can use a combination of pre May, Pristine, Dermafuse. You, you can do a lot with that. Um, but I would say, for example, if someone, I'm just going to give an example because there's so many combinations you can do with pre May, and that would be like a whole nother <laughs> webinar, which I should put together actually. You just gave me that idea. Um, but if someone was like me, they have oily and problematic skin, then I would use the Vibrox first to remove and loosen all of the dead skin cells. And then I would go in with my, my uh, um, Aqua B to cleanse, um, to purify, to nourish. And when people hear um, those words with Aqua B, cleanse, it's not like, 
you're just, it's not like a cleanse. Like if you would cleanse your face with soap and water, it's very different. It's really getting in and cleansing out like true debris out of the skin. So that already is prepping the skin. But if you use the Vibrox first to remove, and by the way, Vibrox, number one, isn't for everyone. And number two, isn't for everyone to use before Aqua B. It's really when someone has oily and problematic skin. So this is just an example. But going in and loosening up all those dead skin cells, then when you go in with the cleansing, it is just that much more, you know, effective. And then purify. And then some people think, well, why would I nourish, purify, nourish, and then go in and put like ultrasound gel on to do micro T or RF and you're using glycerin and ultrasound, so on and so forth. It's, it's not, I want you to think of it as aqua B is like prepping the skin for everything else you're doing. So it's kind of like how I was talking about the pristine prepping the skin before everything else you're doing with B series. Aqua B is that, that when we cleanse and then we purify, so we're getting out all of the dirt, debris, sebum, um, dead skin cells, we want to nourish the skin before we go in with RF, before we go in with ultrasound, before we go in with micro T. It's making sure that the skin is nourished, therefore hydrated. And I've been talking about that a lot today, right? Making sure the skin is hydrated before you're doing all of these other, um, a bit more like aggressive type treatments such as radio frequency and heating the skin. And that's why ultrasound is always the perfect last step because you're then ending the treatment with a deep nourishment. Uh, and then that's what they're going home with. So that's just an example of like, if someone had problematic skin and, and a combination approach I would use, but I will, um, I'll put together a webinar combination approach with the pre and, and put together quite a few different combinations that you can use. Um, yeah, I'll do that for sure. Um, okay, how long after is the after photo of the first combo treatment? I, Leslie, I'm not positive. I just put that photo on as an example of um, what to expect. Uh, going through all of our before and after photos, I because <clears throat> it was zoomed in, I liked it because it, it really showed um, her result well um, and, and really what to expect to look for, but I'm not positive on the properties of the photo. Sorry, I can't answer that. But if you go to our Instagram and um, and you should start seeing like more of that combination approach uh, before and afters, um, you can look for that the one that I was just talking about with the the severe acne on her cheeks, um, also had severe scarring, and you can see her after photo as an example of like. Wow. And, and we were able to get it under control really fast too. And that's so important to so many people, right? So many of your clients. Can you discuss the post-care protocol when using the VFR? In earlier videos, when the device was under the IRB study, it was emphasized that this was a very aggressive handpiece. Oh, great webinar. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. Um, no, it can be an aggressive handpiece for sure. Um, it can be completely like non-aggressive and it, you can crank it up and it can be aggressive. Um, just depends on your parameters, right? So um, as you know, you can just do coagulation without any ablation. And that's gonna be just overall deeper um, healing, healing that we can't see. Um, but it, for the most part, it, it is, it's, it's, a, it's a more aggressive treatment. I wouldn't say you're really aggressive on anybody's like very first, um, but yeah, you can get there for sure. If they have like really bad acne scars and things like that, really, really bad aging to the skin, a lot of elastosis, um, but, but it's controllable, right? And it's not so aggressive where you can't pair uh, treatments. Like one of the best combination is using pristine IPL 580 filter or the NDAG uh, for skin rejuvenation and then the VFR ablation coagulation and then a boost with collagen booster. That's like a, oh, wow, um, for almost anybody. But the post care for, for these things, if you are using VFR, it will always be um, something like Aquaphor, an emollient. It doesn't have to be Aquaphor brand, but it needs to be an emollient, something that's staying on the skin, not just 
not just absorbing like a serum or a moisturizer would. Um, that is important. And the longer you keep it on, the, the quicker and better you're going to heal. So I tell people, wear it for a week if you can. Even, even if I needed to do this webinar, right? And I, and I, I guess I don't have to put makeup on, but I would rather put makeup on to do something like this, right? If I were your patient, all, all I would have to do, let's say it was the second or third, because you're not supposed to wear makeup 24 hours post. So keep that in mind. But let's say it's two days later, I would put Aquaphor on, I would take, take a Kleenex and I would dab and then I would put makeup on. So there's still a barrier there. There's still Aquaphor, but it's not like slick where they can't put makeup on. So they can always wear it to sleep before they put their makeup on, that's great. Now, some patients are gonna be acne prone. So, um, especially if they're coming in for acne scarring. Um, so sometimes Aquaphor can be problematic. If that's the case, I tell them cut down to just sleeping with it at night and then don't wear it during the day. But that's the post care. It's staying out of the sun. It's wearing really high SPF and it's wearing Aquaphor after you've done BFR, if BFR has been in your rotation of combination treatments. But surprisingly, I know it seems like a lot. Oh, one thing I do want to mention, if you do have the Dermafuse and you use the collagen booster, you are going to be shocked. If you haven't started yet, you are going to be shocked on how quickly they heal post VFR compared to using the Dermafuse or not using the Dermafuse. It's really days that's taken off their healing time when you use their, the Dermafuse collagen booster. So that will also help um, really speed up recovery time. But hearing this like stacking, 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 you would think it'd be like, oh, they look crazy. They're not. You're not cranking up your IPL to where they're just beet red, you know, you're just doing a mild, mild redness, a little bit of erythema. Usually if you're using numbing cream with the VFR, they've calmed, the heat's calmed down before you even go in to do the VFR. Um, but the Dermafuse Collagen Booster really speeds up healing, which is great. I hope that helps. Can we use intensive hydration serum with the last step of pre-may for clients sensitive to pre-may serum? For oh, for sure. Um, yes. You, you can, you know, you can even use pristine instead of Vibrox um, before you do Aqua B, or you can do Aqua B and then do pristine. Um, you can absolutely use uh, Dermafuse instead of the ultrasound step for sure. And what's nice too is that with the Dermafuse, you have a lot of options, right? You have collagen booster, you have intensive hydration, you have other ones. Um, but sure, yeah. You use that, use the Dermafuse instead of ultrasound for ones that are a bit more sensitive to it. Absolutely. It's not as like nice and soothing, the warm, <laughs> nice end to the facial. Um, but of course the Dermafuse doesn't hurt, so it doesn't matter. And usually people don't care. They just want the good results, right? Any other questions? I hope I helped the ones that, that did ask the questions. Uh, thank you, great webinar, very educational, helpful, thank you. Oh, thank you, that, make, that makes me really, really happy. I remember, um, like, I remember being able to tell somebody what a good combination treatment would be. Because in my mind, my brain was seeing those slides. And it took me quite a while to like finally figure out a way of putting it down on paper or on a computer to where people could visually see it with me. Um, and I think that that helped a lot um, with knowing why we have these issues, where they're stemming from, and why we can, you know, stack so many treatments. So I'm glad it was helpful. Looking forward to getting my V20 and pre-may next week. Oh my gosh, congratulations. I'm looking forward to it for you as well. That's so great. Um, and thank you. Thanks for joining. Super excited for you. And just remember, we have a ton of webinars. I've done maybe a hundred at this point. Um, so there's a lot to learn for sure in this industry and with, with this company, um, but the webinars are always there for you uh, to, to watch in the future. 
All right. Well, I guess that's it. Uh, thank you guys all so, so much for joining. Really, really appreciate it. Um, look forward to, uh, as always, it was great to see you, Kara, and a great webinar. Can we find the combination online? Um, yes. The, on the customer portal, you'll find like just a ton of materials with, with combinations. If there's something you can't find, email us and, and we'll help you for sure. Yeah. All right, you guys, thank you. I look forward to seeing you again on, on our um, next upcoming webinar. The next one I'm doing with Aaliyah, um, one of my clinical trainers, and we're going to be talking about the differences between like RF microneedling and our VFR and, you know, kind of deciphering between the different types of RFs out there in the industry and how they're different and, and why would you use what over what, you know. Uh, so hope that one's helpful too. I think that one's in about a week. I think it's next week. Hope to see you guys on that one. Thanks, you guys. Have a good evening.